Thank you for listening to the Mutual Audio Network. Please don't turn that dial. The following audio drama is rated G for general audiences. It's time once again for America's favorite show, The Radio Adventures of Dr. Floyd. Brought to you by drfloyd.com. Welcome to The Radio Adventures of Dr. Floyd Live! We begin this episode in the main entry hall of the Dr. Floyd Institute of Technology, where we find Dr. Floyd coming in the front door with Dr. Grant and Chips close behind, struggling with a large Christmas tree. Okay, be careful, you two. We don't want to damage any branches. We are being careful, Dr. Floyd, but you better pick a place to set this down and quick. This thing is heavy. Okay, just give me a second to move this chair here. Oh, how are you doing back there, Dr. Grant? Sap. Lots of sap. Oh, hurry, Dr. Floyd. Okay, okay. Come put it down over here and now stand it up. Uh, uh, (sighs) Golly, that sure is a big tree, Dr. Floyd. (laughs) It sure is. Biggest one in all of Saddle River. Well, if you're going to celebrate the season, you might as well celebrate it big, I always say. Well, I'd say 25 feet is plenty big, Dr. Floyd. Oh, it almost touches the ceiling. It sure does. (laughs) Octavius is really going to be green with envy when he sees this tree at the party tonight. Wait a minute. Are you telling me that you purchased this monster of a tree just to show up your old third grade lab partner when he comes over for our annual holiday party? Well, I wouldn't say it's the only reason, Dr. Grant, but showing old Octavius that I know a thing or two about holiday decorating is a good start. Oh, brother. Well, I still agree with flight attendant Christy that having a large dead tree in the house can be dangerous. Oh, Chips, that's ridiculous. People have been bringing in Christmas trees for centuries now. Oh, really, Dr. Floyd? Yep. No one knows exactly for sure when the first tree was brought in for holiday decoration, but most people agree that the tradition started in Germany sometime in the 16th century. Wow. One story says that it was Martin Luther who was walking through the forest one night, and he saw stars sparkling through the branches of the trees. He was so taken with the sight, he decided to redecorate it at home and using, used a small tree and candles. Oh, he wanted to share that beautiful image with his family and friends. Yep. And not just try to outdo his third grade lab partner. Well, he, uh... Dagnabbit, knock it off, Chips. Why don't you two go get the barrels of decorations from the storage room, and we'll get started on the tree. Oh, all right. I just have to keep an eye on the clock. I need to light my menorah at sundown. Oh, that's right. Tonight's the sixth night of Hanukkah. I can't wait till you see what I bought you for tonight's gift, Chips. Oh, could it possibly be season six of the eight-season Andy Griffith Show complete series DVD box set that you've already given me seasons one through five of? I don't know. It could be. Come on, let's go get those barrels. As Dr. Grant and Chips go off to get the holiday decorations for the tree, let's turn our attention to the frozen north. (laughs) About as far into the frozen north as you can go. (laughs) This is the North Pole. We are in the main office of the man in charge of the North Pole, Father Christmas himself, Santa Claus. Ho, ho, ho! We find Kris Kringle in deep discussion with his right-hand elf, Tappy. Well, I'll tell you, Tappy, I'm not so sure about this. But we must have to, Santa. We're seriously understaffed and dangerously behind schedule. If there aren't enough toys by the 24th, then some good boys and girls are not going to get presents for Christmas. But taking out elf-wanted ads? It's work, though. I, we already have two responses. Would you like to meet the applicants? Oh, I guess. All right, we need all the help we can get, I suppose. Please... Oh, yes, there sir. it is. I thought it was broke again. Yes, sir. <laughs> Miss Boysenberry, would you please send in the applicants? Yes, sir. All right, come right in. And uh, what are your names? Oh, good day there, Santa. My name is Dr. Steve, and this is my sock-shaped elf buddy, Fidget. Oh, Dr. Steve and Fidget. Hmm, why do those names sound familiar? 
I think I remember seeing them on one of my lists right here. A list? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm sure that's not where it was. You probably heard of us because of our world-renowned toy fabricating abilities. Oh, you're experts at building toys, eh? Yes, sir. The very best. All right, then what's your WPM? WPM? Yeah. Toys rep per minute. Oh, I'd say at least 80 or 90. Oh. 80 or 90? Mm. Cheapers. That's more than Kinder Elf can do on a good day. Uh, well, I can believe this little sock-shaped guy here, but aren't you a little tall to be an elf? I mean, you don't look like you could even fit inside a tree. Oh, that. <laughs> well, you see, Chris, can I call you Chris? My family lives in a redwood tree in Northern California, so we've got a little bit more room to grow. Us elves are kind of like goldfish in that respect. You know, we grow bigger if we have a bigger bowl. Right, Fidget? <laughs> hmm. I see. Uh, Cappy, why don't you take Dr. Steve and little Fidget here over to the workshop and get them situated, okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. And, oh, Tappy, keep your eye on them. There's something a little off about these two. Minutes later, Dr. Steve and Fidget are seated at workbenches amidst all the other elves, assembling toys for all the good boys and girls. <laughs> Oh, there's a duck in here. That's great. <laughs> this is perfect, Fidget. We're now employed in Santa's workshop and zoo, where we have unfettered access to all the presents in the world. All we have to do is get these elves to leave, and then all the toys will be mine. <laughs> That's the easiest part, Fidget. Watch. Excuse me there, fellow worker elf. Uh, what's your name? M Mortimer Elf. Mortimer Elf, eh? And how long have you been working here for Santa, Mortimer? Oh, for as far back as I can remember. Really? Well, that's a long time. And, and how many breaks do you get a day? <sighs> breaks? No. <laughs> There's no breaks. We don't have time for breaks. We've got uh, to get all these toys done. No time for breaks? Well, obviously you must get a bunch of vacation time then, right? Vacation? Oh, no, 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 we, we don't get a vacation. We've got to make these toys for little boys and girls. No vacations and no breaks? Boy, oh boy. Well, you must be obviously very well paid. Paid? No, 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 we, we don't get paid. <laughs> Wait a minute. You're telling me that you work long hours making these toys with no breaks and no vacations and you don't get anything from it? Just the satisfaction of tons of smiling children's faces on Christmas morning. I see. And does that keep you warm on these long winter nights? No. And do you get any of the cookies or milk that the kitties leave out for the big guy on Christmas Eve? No, we don't. Yeah, and, and some kids even leave carrots out for the reindeer, but, but nothing for the elves, eh? No! We, we never get nothing. That doesn't sound fair to me. Me neither. If I worked for someone like that, I'd probably go on strike. Yeah, I would too. But you do work for someone like that. I do? I do. That does it. I'm going on strike. Listen up, brother and sister elves. We are working so hard and getting none of the rewards. Our labor leads to the joy of children all around the world, right? Right. right. We spend all year working here. We never get any vacation, right? Right. And we never get any residuals for internet downloads. Uh, that's the wrong strike. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, I think it's time we showed the man that we're all sorts of upset and we're not going to take it anymore. Who's with me? We are. With that, the entire elven workforce pours out of the workshop and into the streets of Santa's village, leaving Dr. Steve and Fidget all alone. See how easy that was, Fidget? All right, you go back our ship up to the loading bay. I'll go get the forklift. <laughs> oh, no! Dr. Steve has sent all of Santa's elves on strike so he can steal all the Christmas toys for himself. What does this mean for Christmas? Find out after a brief word from our sponsor. Okay, kids. It's time for the official Radio Adventures of Dr. Floyd Imagination Nation Rangers secret message. Only for those members of the Dr. Floyd Imagination Nation. Get your Imagination Nation secret decoder ring and pencil and paper and ready. Here comes today's code. 13, 8, 15, 11, 1, 8, 14, 7, 
four, one, eighteen, seventeen, six, twenty-five, seven, eleven, one, seven, twenty-six, three, twenty-three, fourteen, eighteen, seventeen, eight. And that was a message from Dr. Floyd himself to all his Imagination Rangers. You too can be Imagination Ranger and get your own glow-in-the-dark secret decoder ring by going to www.imaginationranger.com or by picking up an action kit at the souvenir stand in the lobby. Yes, even Harold the Holiday Duck agrees. The gift of an Imagination Nation Ranger membership is A-OK. Right, Harold? Mm. And now back to the radio adventures of Dr. Floyd. When we last left that sinister ne'er-do-well Dr. Steve, he'd plotted to steal all the toys for all the good girls and boys of the world by causing all of Santa's elves to go on strike. Hey, Tappy, Tappy, what's going on out there? All the other elves are going on strike, Santa. Mm. It was one of those two... Wait, there were two of those two new elves, both of them. They put him up to it. You mean Dr. Steve and Fidget? Yes. Why, those two naughty nincompoops. Wait a minute, Tabby. That's where I recognize those names from. Where? The naughty list. Look, Dr. Steve's at the very tippity top of it. And Fidget walks the fine line between the very bottom of the naughty and nice list and the top of the nice list. Well, they've caused our entire workforce to walk out two weeks just before Christmas. Hmm. What are we going to do? Well, there's only one thing we can do. Bring me the telephone. As Tappy Elf runs to get the phone for Santa, let's zoom back to Saddle River City, where we find our hero, Dr. Floyd, along with Dr. Grant watching Chips, finishing up lighting the sixth candle of her menorah. Amen. 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 Oh, Happy oh. Hanukkah, Chips. Oh, thank you, Dr. Crone. Hey, I've got some guilt. We should work up a quick game of dreidel before Ooh. we go to the... Uh... Ooh. Oops, that's my private line. Hold on a second. Hello? <laughs> what? <laughs> he did? <laughs> we'll be right there. <laughs> oh, who was that? Santa Claus. Santa Claus? Yeah, apparently Dr. Stephen Fidget are at the North Pole causing trouble. We gotta go stop him. No, oh, but Dr. Floyd, I've... I've just finished lighting my menorah candles, and they've got to burn for at least half an hour, according to tradition. And you know, it's never good to leave candles burning unattended. But you've got to come with us, Chips. I've got an idea. Ensign Pereri! Hip, hip, hip. Yes, sir, hip. Good idea, Dr. Grant. Ensign, could you keep an eye on Chips' menorah while we go stop Dr. Steve? Consider the candles watch, sir. Hip. Excellent. Let's go. Uh, Dr. Floyd, how does Santa Claus have your private home phone number? Uh, we're old friends, Dr. Grant. Wait, wait, wait. You're old friends with Santa Claus? Yep. Now let's go. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. And being his old friend, do you have his phone number? Well, of course I do, Dr. Grant. Now come on, we've got to... Oh, okay, but Dr. Floyd, uh, you didn't tell him about that time a few weeks ago you caught me reading Spider-Man comics way past my bedtime, did you? Oh, brother, Dr. Grant, I don't need to tell him. He knows when you've been sleeping, he knows when you're awake... And should be sleeping. Hello? Oh, no! Come on, we're wasting time. We have to go stop Dr. Steve! (laughs) As Dr. Floyd, Dr. Grant, and Chips head to their ship to race off to the North Pole, let's catch up with Dr. Steve, who we find loading the last of the toys into the back of his ship. There we are. Now all the toys for all the good boys and girls are mine. (laughs) I'm so evil. Why do I need all these presents? Well, I'll tell you, Fidget. In song. Oh, no. I want presents. Lots of presents just for me. All right, all right. Hold it right there, Dr. Steve. Dr. Floyd, how did you find me here? I got a tip from an old pal. Oh, who's that? Me. Santa Claus. Yeah, I knew your name sounded familiar. It's been on the top of my nodding list for years now. Look, see? It's an indelible ink, even. (laughs) Yeah, and and we've caught you red-handed trying to steal all the toys for all the good little boys and girls. No, 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 I wasn't. They just, I... I, uh, Well, you got me, Floyd. I guess this means I'm getting nothing for Christmas, eh? Oh, 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 oh. no, no, no. I'm not as mean as that. No, everyone who celebrates Christmas gets at least a little something from Santa Claus. In fact, I'm going to let you pick out 
your own present. You are? Yes. Tappy, take Dr. Stevie here and let him pick out whatever he wants from the lump of coal pile. <laughs> what? Curses foiled again. Oh, well, come along, Fidget. Right this way. Well, that saves one problem for Santa. <laughs> Yeah, but what am I going to do about the elf strike? Perhaps this will help you, old friend. Yeah. A present? What? For me? Oh, oh. Well, let's see here. What a week. What is this? Well, that, that looks like a time and space travel device, Dr. Floyd. Mm. Well, it's one of the prototype time and space travel devices I made while developing the one we currently use. It doesn't allow you to travel through time or even stop it. But when you push this button right here, it does slow down time a bit. Now you'll have even longer to get the toys made and maybe give your elves a break or two. Oh, oh, oh. you know, this is fantastic. Oh, thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart, Floyd. <laughs> oh, anything for an old friend. Well, we better get back to Saddle River. Our guests will be arriving soon for the holiday party. All right. Take care, Floyd. I'll talk to you in January and we'll go play some bocce ball or something. Sounds great. I've been working on my volo, so you better prepare for a whooping. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Well, we'll see, Floyd. And I hope you have a splendid Hanukkah, Chip. Oh, thank you very much, Mr. Claus, sir. And I'll see you later, <laughs> Dr. Grant. Which reminds me, how have you been enjoying those Spidey-Man comic books lately? Uh... Just fine. Gotta go, Santa. Bye. <laughs> Merry Christmas to all and to all. Uh, uh, what's that word? Oh, yes. Good night. <laughs> Our heroes are soon back in Saddle River, just in time for their guests to start arriving for their annual holiday party. And coming to the door now is none other than Dr. Floyd's third grade lab partner. Presenting Dr. Octavius Tannenbaum. Hip. Well, Octavius, so nice to see you again. Oh, yes, it is. I know. Happy holidays, Floyd. I see you've got a bigger tree this year. Well, yes. How nice of you to notice. Uh, what is that? Uh, 25 feet? Uh, that's 26 feet with a star. Oh, that's impressive. My tree is only 24 feet this year. Oh, is that so? <laughs> well, I'm sure it's still a beautiful tree, Octavius, even at a tiny 24 feet. Oh, yes, it is. I think it's the three-foot star on top that really sets it off, though. Three-foot star? Yes, yes. That would be uh, 27 feet, wouldn't it, Floyd? Well, I'm going to get some eggnog now. I'll see you later. 27 feet. Oh, Tannenbaum. And as Dr. Floyd ponders how he'll decorate for next year, we shall end this episode. What adventures are in store for our hero in the new year? What will Dr. Grant, who is currently in bed, trying hard to sleep, get for Christmas? And just how is Dr. Steve faring in a lump of coal pile at the North Pole? Say, Fidget, what do you think the going rate for a lump of unprocessed coal is on eBay anyway? Hmm. Find out next time on the radio adventures of Dr. Floyd! Hello, I'm John Bell of Bells in the Battery, along with my associates, Arnie Kunch. I can introduce myself. Thank you very much. All right. Hi, I'm Arnie Kunch. That's it? That's it. And also, do you want me to introduce you, Brad? Well, of course, Mr. Bell. That's your job as host. Thank you, Brad. And I'd like to introduce Brad... Hold it. What? Here's your script. Script? <laughs> well, you got to know what to say. All right. <clears throat> And introducing Brad Montworth, a salesman, incomparable public relations expert, and, of course, unrivaled attorney at law. No, come on, you know how to say it, Mr. Bell. Unrivaled attorney, attorney at, at, at law. law. Oh, Mr. Bell, you shouldn't say those things. You make me blush. Can I do my introduction over again? No. We're here for an important reason. Very important. Indeed. If you think you deserve significant financial compensation, call Brad Motworth, attorney, attorney at, at law. law. Oh, boy. At 5554. No, 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 no. We're here to remind everybody to take steps to avoid the coronavirus. Yeah, don't catch it. Because there's no one you can sue. Wash your hands thoroughly and keep social distancing. 
What? So, so, <laughs> One more time. Stay about six feet away from everybody else. Right, very good. Oh, I gotta wash my hands thoroughly. I don't want to get me this corona. Ooh, keep your distance now, socially. I want to keep feeling fine, corona. Never gonna stop getting squirts from my Purell. I'm always gonna buy all the toilet paper that they sell. Bye, 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 bye. 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 Bye, Corona. Bye, Corona. Don't get no closer, huh? Beat it, huh? Far enough where I can't see your eyes, Corona. An illness history is not for me. Uh uh. Don't want to try your COVID on for size, Corona. Never gonna touch. Stay away. My epidermis never wants to be close to where that nasty germ is. Bye, 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 bye. Woo. Fly Corona! Fly Corona! Captain Fly Corona! What? Pumpkin Pie Corona! Now wait a minute! Fly Corona! Goodbye Corona! Good riddance!